much more conducive to how I would work regularly than having to like jockey polys around that. So it's much more conducive. It's much more artist friendly than the way I've worked in the past. Um, and that's only come about in the past few years. So. And you can see it in games. I mean, games have come a long way in the past, like, I don't know, six years ish. And a lot of it has to do with like Mudbox and ZBrush as far as like how you deal with uh, polygons now. ZBrush is more organic. Uh, where ships are very hard surface, very, you know, crisp lines, stuff like that. But if a ship gets beat up in battle or if it's bent or blasted or, you know, blown apart or something, then you'd probably t want to take it in ZBrush at some point and, like, do the scarification, do the the blast marks, do the, the bending and the... The more organic type of stuff. Well, which, the thing is, uh, so with the 300i and the way we're modeling these ships now, so that would come into play if we had a lot of unique baked textures. So you, you, you bake detail, you know, from a high poly to a low poly. Uh, with these ships that we have now, it's mostly a tile texture because we have such a high resolution on the on the outer shell of these ships and everything. So. What, what kind of resolution are we talking about here? Because I want to build my power rig very soon. So, how do I? <laughs> well, I mean, we're using the 1024 map, which is not that high, but <clears throat> we're scaling the UVs so big that, you know, on the ship, you know, it, it makes the texture look more crisp. And what about the detail of, like, the cockpit and everything inside? Uh, the detail in the cockpit is actually unique. So, most of that is, uh, has been baked from normal maps. And uh, it started off with you, a high that's poly. That's you as well? You're doing that too? Yeah, I did everything. Oh my gosh. Everything. He does the whole game. I don't know why you're here. I don't know why you're here. It's the Chris, Chris Smith show, ladies and gentlemen. I, well, I did everything, the lighting. I give him No, I, yeah, I modeled the whole thing and, right. uh, from start to finish and texture. Yeah, and you? Come on, Jeff. Excellent. Excellent. Speak up. But, uh, I helped out on the 309 commercial, the okay. landing pad, which uh, Elijah concepted okay. out the landing pad and the, the, the various houses that he had concepted from those uh, built that for the commercial and then uh, now I'm back on to the M50. See, these things take a long time, right? Weeks? Yeah, it's definitely, well, months. I mean, these ships uh, definitely take a long time from design to finish. I mean, characters as well. I mean, everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, especially all, this guy, right? it takes forever. Get them all. Anyway. Get them all. Um, we just scan them in. <laughs> so we just scan <laughs> <Yeah>. ships. <laughs> We have the cool model button. Yeah. That's it. No, yeah, it's definitely a, a crazy process, and especially like Brian mentioned, uh, there's a couple, you know, some growing pains that we're going through, you know, because uh, some things are unique uh, that we're doing as opposed to other games. Um, so what, yeah. are, what are those big flat screen things that you guys work on? Oh, Cintiq? Oh, Cintiq. Yeah, what's that? Um, well, it, it's sort of geared towards, like, uh, organic, either sculpting or painting, so... As a, you know, sort of akin to like traditional drawing and stuff. So you basically draw on that. Mm -hmm. Minority Report. That's what it is. Yeah. Is that you do it with your finger? No, you do it with a pen, right? Ah, close enough. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there are versions that you can use your fingers and stuff, but I don't think we have any here. So. So who has one of those? Who's got? Who's got? Elijah, you've got one. Not cool enough. Not cool enough. I'm yeah. approaching coolness, but. I gotta lose the hat first before I. He needs a centi, right? Cool. All he has to do is put in a quest and he'll get one. So. Right, right. I'm afraid. Too old I'm afraid of technology. I can't handle it. 1979. I can't handle it. Me? I'm no. not sure it was. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Chris, yeah, said, 19, Chris said you're working on the banner, is that true? Or what you're working on right now? Yeah. No, for like the live stream, there'll be like a, a new uh, character release for the banner. So. How long do these things take? When did you start that? Um, about three years ago. What? So. No. no. <laughs> um, Seemingly, that was the sex change operation. <laughs> that was well, no, the, that was three years ago. Um, the the basic sort of uh, look is down, but we're trying to get sort of like the um, the finished costume finished before you know the live stream. So okay. yeah, no, it's it's hard to sort of put a number on things because there's like so many other things going on at the same time. So right. everybody's balancing you know right. multiple things at the same time. And well, some people are night owls. Some people I know Chris Roberts is a night owl. Right. So how do you guys? What time does he wake up in the morning? Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> what does he have for breakfast? <laughs> yeah, what is it? He, he, he emails like at 5 a.m., so I'm just curious. Uh, <laughs> he works till about 4 or 5 a.m. Speedos. Yeah. I work in Speedos. Yeah. British yeah. Speedos. Yeah. They kind of release my creativity. <laughs> all right, come on, all right, come on then. When, when, when are your best hours? Especially nude or not nude? When are your best hours, Mark? The weekend. The weekend? That's my best hours. Best hours? No, I, you know, I don't know. It, it depends. I, I don't I don't mind working during the day, I guess. It, you know what? It, to an artist, it's, like, quiet. If you can have quiet for, like, a couple of hours. Like about the flow, you know. Stay yeah. in the okay. flow. Like, uninterrupted craziness, then that's when you get the most work done, obviously. I think that's with anybody, though. You okay. know. But, you know, since there's so much crazy. Yeah, no, it's... um. I mean, for an artist, it, it's hard to sort of, like, switch gears constantly or, like, go to meetings or answer emails, you know, when you're trying to, like, work on something specific. So it's good to have, like, a, a day interrupted to be able to concentrate on something. So I know that Chris says that the, the morning hours, early morning hours are the best hours for him because nothing to do. And when I take sick days... And just work from home. That's oh my god! Oh. We could, God didn't like sick that. Days. Sick days for you. Who's taking sick days? Let's start with the process. We start with the character concept. Right. So lead us through the table here, how we get something done. Uh, well, it sort of starts with what character we need for, like, the first iteration of what we're going to release, which is the, the hanger. So right now it's concentrating on the, the main character for the hanger. So we have a concept artist sort of designing some things. Once that is approved through Chris and myself, then it goes to Mark to actually build it out using ZBrush and various tools. So. so usually what I do then is I will take the concept and just kind of do a rough block in, make sure that the, uh, the size and the silhouette is correct. Something quick so I can, I can usually show Chris Roberts and make sure that I'm on the right track. Because, you know, obviously from a concept to a 3D sculpt, there's always some issues that come up. Like, for some of the stuff, I had to, like, um, like reduce the chest plate a little bit so he had a little more mobility, you know, in the arms, which I talked to Brian about, you know, beforehand to make sure that everything is, that what I'm guessing at is true. And, like, the way that the um, shoulder pads, like, fold in on each other is correct. It's more real world. It always happens in concepts where if you do it straight to the concept, it reduces mobility so much that when you put it in the game, it doesn't look right. So usually you have to either size things down or redesign them a little bit so that they work in real world. So um, there's, there's a lot of testing back and forth between um, what he's designing or building and, and um, Brian as far as like what's you know capable of like movement and stuff. So, so how do you do that part, Brian? Is that motion capture? <clears throat> oh, okay, so the kind of the full process. Uh, there are a lot of technical requirements to making sure a character works in game, and one of them is to make sure that the character Mark is building is fitting our skeleton. We have a skeleton that we went back and forth on with the character, our, our base character, which we've all already seen uh, released, and uh, kind of figured out where all our joint placement needs to be. From now on, any uh, character artist who builds a, a mill for our game now has to fit this in particular template. And, uh, yeah, there, there is a lot of back and forth between Mark and myself. And, uh, will this, in particular, piece of armor work? Will this spacesuit work? How do these tubes that are running along the spacesuit uh, need to be built properly to, uh, to animate properly? So there's a lot of thought process that goes into technically making uh, these, these, in particular, spacesuits work. We can't get away with things in video games that we can get away with in movies. It's movies it's mad, you know, you, sometimes you can fake something to make that shot look proper. Video games it has to look good all the time. Uh, so once I have the character and he's skinned up and he's looking good and, and everything's been approved, 
the next step is to take a set of animations given to me, usually by design. They'll say, hey, we need these in particular animations. Uh, I then look at those animations and determine, is this an animation that should be hand-keyed, where I go in there by hand and hand-key whatever it happens to be, or is this something that we can capture quickly and easily with motion capture? Uh, if it's motion capture, then we go out and we shoot it and edit it, uh, put it on our character, make sure that, again, there's... <laughs> Animation is probably one of the more technical uh, sides of art development for a game. And then how much of that interacts with Chris? So obviously if you have your character, 